Hello, I'm Christine Kay. I'm a vitro-retinal surgeon and an IRD specialist located in Gainesville, Florida at Vitro-Retinal Associates. I'm here at Academy of Ophthalmology in San Francisco 2023. I had the opportunity yesterday at Retina Subspecialty Day to present the top-line data from the Alkes Pharmaceutical-sponsored trial called TEAS-1. Um, this TEAS-1 study was a trial in patients with Stargardt disease looking at a drug called Gilduretinol. Um, the primary efficacy endpoint was looking at growth rate of the atrophic lesion in patients with Stargardt disease. Stargardt disease is a relatively common form of retinal dystrophy caused by two mutations in a gene called ABCA4. Patients with Stargardt disease um, lose vision to 2200-2400 range um, over a short period of time and it causes a legal, uh, legal blindness in patients um, typically in their, their 20s. So this is a severe form of a retinal dystrophy that we would like to be able to treat. Um, the top line data from the Alkeus Pharmaceutical uh, trial um, looked again at the growth of the atrophic lesion on something called autofluorescence, and there was a statistically significant improvement in patients treated with gilduretinol, uh, which is a modified form of uh, vitamin A that decreases dimerization and buildup of a byproduct in the retina that happens in patients with Stargardt. Um, the top line data was that there was a 21% reduction in the square root of the area of the autofluorescent lesion compared to the untreated patients. There were 30 patients that were randomized to treatment with gilduretinol retinol, and there were 20 patients that were randomized to receive placebo. Um, 10 of them crossed over to treatment after 12 months, and we also augmented the uh, placebo arm with 59 natural history cases of patients with ABCA4 confirmed Stargardt retinal dystrophy. Uh, so again, that important endpoint was a 21% reduction in the square root of the area. Uh, the endpoint was between a six-month time point and a 24-month, so it was an 18-month uh, in interim uh, data point. Um, there was a secondary post hoc analysis that I think was important that was done to look at functional vision. This was microperimetry. Microperimetry was done on the NIDAC, and we looked at uh, area of retinal sensitivity in patients in the, in the zone around uh, in the seeing retina. And there was an 80% preservation in patients treated with Gilder retinol, so 80% less loss of retinal sensitivity in patients treated with Gilder retinol, and retinal sensitivity as measured by microperimetry um, in the treated arm versus the untreated arm, so we have important data showing um, rescue of retinal function in these patients. So it was very uh, exciting to be able to present positive data. This particular um, indication received breakthrough designation by the FDA in 2021. The Alkeus company received breakthrough designation for this Gilder retinal treatment for um, the treatment of patients with Stargardt disease. Um, not FDA approved yet, but we have hopes for the future, and I would love to be able to offer this therapy to my patients with Stargardt disease as I do believe it is clinically beneficial. How is this treatment administered? This is an oral drug. It's delivered once a day, so major point uh, is this is a daily delivered oral drug. Uh, the safety profile was that of vitamin A, so this is um, like taking a daily vitamin A. It's a modified form of vitamin A, um, so we replace the hydrogen atoms with deuterium, which is a non-radioactive isotope of hydrogen, and so it changes the way that the natural vitamin A is processed and dimerizes, which means bind to itself and causes a byproduct, so it reduces lipofusin accumulation, but it's just an oral pill that patients need to take once a day. Um, the safety profile was actually very good. Um, we looked at liver function tests, we looked at EKGs. Uh, there was one patient in the trial that had papilledema, which is optic nerve edema, and that resolved after coming off uh, the therapy and um, taking Diamox, and that patient was actually able to resume uh, the treatment and able to remain in the trial and did not have that return. Um, so overall, 150 plus patients have been treated with this oral drug at this point, and the safety profile is fairly well defined at this point as very safe and tolerable. As Stargardt is considered a form of macular degeneration, could this be a possible treatment for age-related macular degeneration as well? That's a good question. Uh, the um, Stargardt disease is caused by mutations in the ABCA4 gene, so there's a very specific mechanism of why um, this particular molecule would be very beneficial in Stargardt-related macular dystrophy because of that ABCA4 gene defect. However, there's certainly supportive data that this may also be useful in geographic atrophy. Um, may even have you know, a more direct benefit than some of the complement inhibition pathways that we, we've been going at in the field. Um, but that um, 
remains to be to be um, fully seen and evaluated. The um, Saga trial actually did, uh, we don't have final data on this at this point, but this company, Alkes Pharmaceuticals, did look at uh, this therapy, Gildu Retinol, in patients with age-related macular degeneration with geographic atrophy, and that data has not been um, finalized or released at this time. But we'll be hopeful for that data to come out in the future. What are the next steps in this study? So there, the T studies are a basket series of studies that are independent clinical trials. There was T1, which was these end-stage patients with a well-delineated area of atrophy, so more advanced Stargardt patient. T2 were earlier patients uh, with Stargardt, and we looked at uh, retinal function and microperimetry quite closely in that trial. That trial just recently finished enrollment. Uh, a few months ago, I believe, and so um, a year and a half from now, we'll have the, the final data um, from that once we un unmask the data and are able to look at the final data. Ts uh, three and four were also studies, um, I won't go through each one of them, but you know, other cohorts of patients with different inclusion criteria. Um, so data continues to be collected, and um, the, the path forward is to continue to collect that data and hopefully in the future submit to the FDA and uh, get endorsement for an FDA approval, but those are things in the future. Are you currently enrolling patients for the next steps in this study? Um, TS4 is still enrolling. So TS4 is a um, pharmacokinetic study. It's um, a six months visit, and so we are at least at my site, Vitro Retinal Associates in Gainesville, Florida, um, still enrolling TS4, which is open label. So patients in that trial are administered open label. Um, there's no randomization in, in TS4, and we see the patients every six months in clinic. Um, so there is one. Uh, component of the TEAS trials that is still currently enrolling to my knowledge, which is the TEAS 4 study. For further information on enrollment into the TEAS study, you can search at www.clinicaltrials.gov for Stargardt and keyword TEAS, T-E-A-S-E. Thank you for your time.